Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a, like a stencil, you know, of, of this. Um, so you can take your shapes that you want to try to get more of an exact shape um, for when you um, do your chinkalay, your process, when you try to do like a single color, you know, a more complex, um, you know, shape um, and stuff like that. So, so it's just a, a basic design that I, that I cut out pretty quick. Um, obviously I have some areas where I could color just the background in. Um, this is all carved out so I could have different color balloons, you know, and this is just the weight on the bottom that I could also do that. Um, so when I did this, um, I want to have a little bit um, thicker line around here to make it a little bit easier for myself to get this process done. Um, I got some of my ink out. I don't want a whole lot um, because I want to kind of conserve what ink or the, what ink I have, you know, for my actual project. Okay, so I'm going to take my briar. Come in here, ink this up. Um, I know the ink is in the very middle of this and I don't need a clean print. I mean, this is not a graded print. Um, it's just to know where the lines and the shapes are at. So this does not have to be perfect by any means, but you gotta be able to see your lines. Um, one nice thing about this is I can see where I have a little bit on the high side, so I should go in there and clean that up a little bit. Okay, I think I have that pretty well done. Set this off to the side. Go grab my rolling pin. So I have this all set. I got my rolling pin. I'm gonna put the paper over top of this. Um, this is just this is actually a piece of cardstock. Any paper will be fine. Um, if you have something that's a little bit on the the thicker side, just because you're gonna use this as as like a um, something that you're gonna be cutting out and then tracing. And it, it's nice if it's a little thicker, but it doesn't have to be. But it, if you have it like a piece of tag board or something, that'll be nice. So I'm gonna set this down. I always put my hand on this first. If I get a little sticky, take my rolling pin. Pull my print. So this is this is good enough. Um, I don't need anything more than that because I can see exactly where my lines are um, on everything, and I'm I'm good to go. Okay. So I'm gonna stop this video, I'm gonna get this, let this dry, get this all cut out, and I can show you the next step. Okay, on the assignment, I do have this all dried. Um, it's been sitting for a few hours. Um, you could probably get away with it only sitting for about an hour. Um, but the next part is, is remember, this is gonna be your stencil. Uh, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna take a, a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut out um, the shapes so then I can use that to trace over onto like another sheet of paper. Like I might want to have this blue and yellow, you know, maybe this one red, you know, maybe this one blue, you know, so I can kind of play around with those, those color combinations. Um, now the question was that B was like, well, should I cut along this inside black line or should I cut along the outside one? I would cut in the middle because um, then that way you have a little bit of flexibility on both ends of it. Um, so you can kind of work around that. Um, I'm also going to cut out this shape. Um, I'm not gonna worry about the background because I, I, I really did not intend to do that as, as a color um, per se. And I think if I wanted to do anything more than just that, I might actually print out another one um, and then use that to kind of cut around that. Um, I might just do a solid one around the entire thing um, as, a, as a demonstration, but, but I definitely wanna get these four shapes that I can mess around with. So I'm gonna get that cut and then we will talk when I get that done. Thanks. Okay, so I got the um, things all cut out. So these are gonna be my three balloons. Um, and I also have my triangle for the weight. Um, so now I look at this. So you can see this side. Um, remember I cut in the middle. So I didn't cut on the left side or the right side line. I cut in the middle. So then I set this down on here and you should have a pretty exact um, piece for it to fit. So I just wanna position that the best that I can. Um, I'm going to take this one. This one fits in right here. This one fits in 
right here. Doesn't have to be perfect this time. When you do your own colors, it definitely has to be perfect. I'm just trying to show you. And then this one would go right here. So if you notice, obviously they're all upside down. So when you print this, um, this is the part that's going to be glue. And I'm actually going to put glue on here in terms of drive network. <clears throat> because it matters if you decide that whatever color paper you use, that the side that, when I trace this out, so I'm going to take this balloon, and I want to make this a pink balloon, and let's say there is... Um, I'll grab another piece. I'm just going to ruin this. Pretend there's like a pattern on this side. I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to take this, put this over top here so I can trace this out. So then I can set it on here. The pattern is showing from the point of view is after you print and you flip it over. So remember, because everything is reversed. Um, and then I, I know that I need to put my, my glue stick glue on here. Um, so when I put this on here, you know, it's going to be touching that ink. And then when I run it through the press, if you decide to do it at school or if you're going to hand roll it, um, the glue will stick to the paper, the ink will stick to, the, to this pink paper, and then you got your first one. Um, so, so that is a way to do it. So looking at, you know, your, your document, you are going to be submitting five prints. Okay, and so you have, so you're gonna, you're gonna do this five times, but there's, there's, I wanted you to experiment a little bit with that. Um, so you have, your first print is one simple color, and you're gonna, just, you're gonna tell them, it's like, well, what, do you, what, what would you decide as a simple color? A simple color would be um, something where you could take, like a piece of construction paper like this, take your block, you know, set it down on your block, um, upside down, trace out that long rectangle, cut that out, and that's one simple color that's, you know, the shape of this entire thing. You know, that's pretty simple, okay? You can't really get much easier than that, except for this abstract one. So that would work for this one. Then your second one is like a little, a more complex one color. And that would be where I might end up taking these out, doing that technique I've already showed you. Because this is definitely much more complicated than doing a, a rectangle. Okay, so that'd be the second one. Third print, it says print two colors. So I could have that, um, and then maybe I would decide to throw this in right here. You know, or I would decide that I would want to do this one down here. Because there's two colors. If you don't like the way you think that would look, you say, well, I, can we skip that? And could I go to my four colors instead and maybe do five colors? That's fine. If you have another idea, just, just kind of shoot it at me. Um, I just want to make sure you are kind of experimenting with a couple different things, but I would totally get it if, 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 if the design you have doesn't work with this print, you know, two colors. Um, and then four, four more, you know, that would definitely be the one where I'd have a, you know, like a pink balloon here, maybe a, a blue balloon here, an orange balloon right here, because I just have those colors right here, you know, and, and then have something down there. Remember, my, my uh, ink is black, so I would kind of stay away from that, but maybe I'd make a, make a white one. But then my color of my paper is white, so I guess that would make sense, unless I decided to print the entire thing on a different color. So that would have to be, you know, a different color paper in itself. Um, the fifth print, and I'll have a little demonstration for all these, um, is where it's just very abstract, where you would take maybe a section of like this, you know, and then a section like this, you could tear it so you have that texture on there. But then that's your abstract one. That's why I called this one the very abstract but very easy, is I just want you to play around with a couple of possibilities um, that might be kind of fun. Um, so we're going to set to the side. Um, I'll probably switch over uh, maybe to a time-less video um, and, and print this off um, and just see how it looks. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I got my first one done. 
Um, so what I have here again is my first print, simple one color. So it's just tracing the outside of it, like you like I showed you on like a piece of construction paper, and you might have to you know stop in to grab some unless you have something at your house. I mean, if you use newspaper, you know, if you have that, you could use that. I've done that when I was in college instead of instead of this. Um, in terms of like the quality of this print, um, it would probably be like an A minus. Um, it's not amazing by any means uh, because I don't. I kind of messed up over here, um, a little bit here. I definitely did not have enough ink up along this area on this print. Um, so I should be able to see that. I should just be able to see black. I should not see the color. Um, but it's it's good other places. So I would give this like an A minus ish. Um, it would not be a B. Um, at least I don't think it would be a B. <laughs> if you don't agree with the grade, you can kind of talk to me about it, um, like anything. And then maybe I, maybe I overlooked it or was too critical. Um, now, I didn't print this exactly, you know, on here. Um, I'm going to go over how to register a print in terms of um, these are all going to be original. So this will be one over one. Um, you give it a title, um, like I might call this birthday, um, and then you sign it right underneath there. That's how you register your prints, and that is part of your grade because part of printmaking is that. That is that is a big part, you know, of, of, of this whole thing. Um, and then you'll be um, putting this on Artsonia. Okay, other than that, I'm going to set this one off to the side, but you saw how I did it. Um, you know, I inked this whole thing up. Um, I put, you know, I, I had my, my paper, you know, I put a bunch of glue over the entire thing, um, set it down as carefully as I could, put that white paper pot over top of it, and then I, and then I, um, I use the press here because I have it and it's a lot quicker and simpler and it won't shift on me at all, so I'm trying to make these really nice. Um, if you don't want to come in, um, again, you can uh, use a, a rolling pin like this um, if you have one. And if you don't, you can use like a, the back of the spoon or something like that. The big thing is, and I don't know if you noticed when I did this, is once I had this all on here, I had that, I put that white paper over top. I really pressed down hard on here because the ink makes everything stick so it doesn't shift on you. So hand printing shouldn't be a big issue. I mean, it'll be a small one, and I, I won't take points off of that because you're kind of dealing with a unique situation if you're all virtual. Um, but but if you can, you know, come in and, and do this for Open Hour Room Night because I'm I'm doing this video right now during Open Hour Room Night. Um, so there's a reason why I have it so people can work on it if they want. Otherwise, I will, um, because I'm ready for the next one, I'm not going to wash this. I'm going to leave the ink on there. Um, I'm going to get this all cut up, and I'll do my next one, okay? Okay, so I have my next one done. Um, I screwed up on it. I don't know if you had noticed, um, but I forgot to put the glue on it um, before I started putting it on there. And if I did not have, I actually had some um, liquid um, spray that I threw on there really quick. And I think it did affect the, um, the ink itself, um, but I messed up. And if, if I was to redo it over again, I would, if when I had everything on there, it's like, well, I might as well try that. And, for the most part, it worked. Um, you're never gonna get anything perfect, but um, but if I didn't have that, I would have had to pull them off. Probably would have thrown them away, started over again, um, and that would have kind of sucked, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, but I had it, so it's good. So this is one, two, three, four colors. So I'm not gonna demonstrate on the second print, which is a more complex, because that one where you would just emphasize an area and you just have like one blue, you know, or whatever you got. Um, you know, the second one is, I'm sorry, the third print. Remember, the first one is just a simple color. Um, that's what this one was. So this would be number one. A number two was just would just be this. Your number three would have at least two things in color. You know, and your fourth print would have four or more. Um, so this would count as your fourth print because I got one, two, three, four. Again, this is kind of probably kind of a, like an A minus or B because I don't have enough color here. You know, this isn't a big deal. Um, this uh, uh, things are like that because to me that's just kind of part of the printmaking process is you'll end up having these shapes or not shapes but you'll end up having areas that are on here that just kind of get hit um, because they're elevated a little bit too much you can always go in and carve it. and I, I did carve some areas out before when I did that, that test one that I, I was able to get 
Um, but otherwise, um, you know, this is this is okay. This bothers me um, like that. So I think if I was to do this over again, this is why you do so many prints, is that I would get these cut out, um, get the, um, uh, you know, the glue on it, and then, then I would ink this up one more time with my briar uh, to make sure this is nice and still wet and juicy. And then I would take the, you know, the glued pieces on here um, and then that should, then that should work. Um, so next one that I'm going to do is just kind of the, the fifth one, which is just a very abstract one. Um, and that one would be pretty quick because I was going to take kind of some random paper. I might grab some tissue paper instead of just this. Um, you can grab newspaper, but it's just kind of a, kind of a fun way of, of, of finishing it all off. That that's, that's good. So set this one off to the side and let this one dry. So I'm going to switch over to time elapsed and get the last one done. Okay, so I got the last one done. This is print number five, the fifth print. Um, again, I did not demonstrate the second print, which is one color. I did not demonstrate the third print, which is just two colors, um, because it's, it's kind of the same thing. You just kind of choose that. Um, so this one's different. Um, I used um, tissue paper this time. Um, really difficult to use. I don't think I'd use it again because I, I had a really hard time gluing it, and then I glued it. And then I got it all linked up. I was getting ready to put it on and, and the glue was dried already. Um, and I, I wasn't going slow. Um, so, so this isn't perfect on here exactly. Um, so I don't know if I would recommend it. Um, it is kind of fun because when you start overlapping, and it's a little hard to see in the video there, but you do get some color variations when you do that. So that's one thing that's cool about it. Um, but you know, I might recommend if you, if you don't want to have any deal with any issues, stay with um, construction paper. Um, but this is the abstract one where I wanted to have, you know, these squares were yellow, and then this blue down here, you know, was kind of emphasizing this part, you know, but but I threw it on there, you know, to make it more abstract, and and this is done, you know, and it's fun. Um, so, so you might like that one. You might say, well, I'm gonna try to do that again with another one, you know, and you can do that. And then, you, you again, you just take a picture of them individually, um, put them on Arsonia, um, because this is your, your final project. Um, and I should say before that, we do need to, to label this. Um, so in terms of turning this in, um, you're gonna turn them all, you're gonna turn them all into me, um, but you're gonna have to write on the back of them, you know, which one's your favorite, uh, and we'll probably just, um, just display your favorite one, you know, or if you had two you really liked, we could do like a side-by-side -side, um, one on that. I'm still kind of thinking about how I wanna do that, but all of these need to be signed. And the way that you'd sign them for the registration part is this, and this, this is points. This is an original. So I write down, I'm going to grab a different one because this, has, this would be a little kind of harder to do. Let me go back to the four color one. So this is original. I'm only going to do one of these. There's not going to be another one in existence. So you put down one over one, okay? And then you title this. I'm going to call this one birthday. And then you sign it. And I'll put my full name on, which is, and that's my signature. Okay. You do the same thing. One over one, birthday, and then your signature. You get your next one out. This is an original. If I had two that were pink, then I would say, and this was my first one, I'd say one over two and two over two. Okay, because that's it's a, it's a registration series of two pieces, and then you have that. So I'll do one over one. Um, and because it's not original, I couldn't change the name. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to call this one pink. Or I could call it, it's a girl, you know, if I wanted to um, on that. And then again, I'll sign it. And there's my signature. Okay. Um, so they all need to be signed, and that is points. If you do not do that, or if you do not do that correctly, you, you could change your grade from like an A minus to like a B, that kind of thing, because this is huge um, in, in the printmaking world. Um, other than that, um, 
Again, I, I need all of them uh, um, turned in. Um, and then on the back of here, you would say like, you know, favorite or something um, or on the back of here. Uh, we're gonna end up trimming this out for you. Um, if you were here in school, we would use something called a tear bar. Um, but if you're not, um, or, if, or, or if this video is made and people are making this as a choice, um, then you would, because you'd use a tear bar, you know, to try to go around and you kind of get this thing called a deckle edge on there. So, well, good. Other than that, again, you should have five total prints. You know, I only have, I only have three um, that are here. Um, and I would have to get, you know, two more and then, then your series is done. So thank you for your time. Good luck on the project. And like always, email me if you have any questions.